But I started reading this interesting book about leadership, leadership and duplication. But it talked about leadership being really just like different levels of consciousness. And the first level of like leadership or consciousness is like to me. And it's like victim mentality, which is like my happiness and my success is external to me. But then there's by me, which is like if it's to be, it's up to me. You take like extreme ownership and accountability. And the bridge from to me to by me is responsibility. 95% of this population spends 98% of their time in to me. And he's like, all you have to do is look at the news. Something's bad happening, it's outside of you. They're the reason why they're wrong and you're right. But then the next evolution is through me. And that's where like as a leader, or as a human, you start to have this awareness like there's something else that wants to accomplish something through me. That's where you are now. That's where you're getting to. That's where I'm getting yeah. to. And I think it's in conjunction. I, I can feel that. Yeah, because you, you mastered the... By me. The by me. Well, and the interesting thing is, did you know what the what gets you from by me to through me? Surrender and letting go. But the reason why it's so hard is once you master the by me, you're in control. It's really hard to let go of control. So conversations with you, also I think reading the Bible for a year, starting the Bible study, where now this through me thing, now when you say to me it's only money, I get it. Yeah. But you said it to me a year ago, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, Lars? <laughs> <laughs> like literally, literally, I'm like, what are you saying? I don't understand. But it really is. But it's also because we have the ability to go out and make it. Yes. Like, at will. People have different problems, you know? But I also have this feeling where like, and it's interesting to articulate, I haven't told it to like too many people. When you were telling me like, hey man, like, you're being called to like, have an impact on more people. That was like a nudge in the through me, in conjunction with like reading the Bible, in conjunction with the Bible study. Where like, what it really feels like is like that presence or being saying, hey, I want you to do this. And when you do it, you're in alignment with like his will. And as such, this gets easy, easier. The kingdom of heaven is within you. When I say that, people think a geographic place, but kingdom in Greek, that's not what it means, that word. What it means is royal power, royal dominion, and royal control. That's a totally different message. One is like this space is within you. The other is the power, the royal power, royal control, and royal dominion is inside of you to make it here as it is there. That's a call to action. It's a call to lead. Can you imagine going back and selling houses? Never. <laughs> like literally, I'm driving around on my way home. I'm like, why would I ever, God? Or like, even if I'm, cause I'm never on the road at like six o'clock. I used to not get home till like eight o'clock. I'm like, I can't even imagine like, and I used to be excited, but like driving home at seven o'clock having missed dinner, I'm like, I would never do that. Yeah. Ever. And you told me that Carla once said to you, like, uh, you were almost telling her that uh, you were a little bit, like, almost apologetic for how hard you worked, and she was like, honey, I mean, but, I mean, you created this amazing, yeah. I mean, so, you know, it's not, it's not all bad. It's not all bad. No. It's, it's not. And I think that it's interesting because the rub is, is I think, in a way, you have to go through that season. 100%. You have to. And yeah. what I try to tell people, it's like the Rocky cut scene. Yeah. Like, you know, in the movie Rocky, where he's like punching the me yeah. and running up the hill. Everybody I know that's achieved really outsized outcomes have gone through that. Yeah. At yeah. least, and it, and it could be five years, could be seven years, could be 10 years, just depends on how long it is. Yeah. But me and Carla did this, um, this like couples retreat and they have this, uh, they call them ceremonies. But one of the ceremonies is you take a rose petal, the rose, and you pull off a petal and you look right at the person, square your body, and you're like, I appreciate, fill the bike. Few things you become aware of. One, you don't do that that often. But also, two, there's a lot of fucking rose petals. <laughs> so you gotta like really. Oh, like you're doing. Each one. Oh, that's all. Awesome. I go, she goes. I go, she goes. So you really gotta like dig and think about it. And like good stuff comes up. But the second one was, I'm sorry. And she looked at me and she was like, I'm sorry you had to miss out on some of the stuff with the kids. I fucking, like, bro, I went from being like, like totally fine to like, I couldn't even contain myself. It like pierced right into my chest. But the fact that she said it to you. Yeah. Like knowing that like, I know you did that yeah. for us, but I'm sorry you had to do it. And not, I mean, not harboring any resentment. No. Or even along the way. I mean, there were probably times she was There was. Like, there was friction. Yeah. Yeah. But that through me thing, now I have like, I have words to describe what I'm feeling. If that makes sense. Yeah. That concept of like, and what I think this is, 
the majority of it is getting people that are in to me to buy me because I think that other journey is different and I'm not saying it, it because it took me forever to realize that most people just are never gonna step right. into the game I was telling Carla like the 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 through me first you have to believe in something that's bigger than you or have faith in something that's bigger than you that could be that could be the quantum field that could be God that could be love it has to be something I'm gonna go look at the spa menu with Dad the what menu? spa okay you have your phone? That happens first, but then too, you have to also, I feel like, go through the whole buy me thing. I told Jose, I was having this whole long conversation with him, like, bro, the reason why it's so hard for you to get out of production is because you're finally in control. It took you 10 years. At the highest level. At the highest level, and now you can do it at will. So it's very difficult to let it go. I still think you'll build a big coaching company too. You do? I think so. I think you you won't help but be able to do it. Yeah, it'll happen. On your, on your terms, just stick to your 10 or 12 clients. Yeah. You know, and get, and you, you'll have people that come through that crush it, that can coach 10 or 12 people. Yeah, Jessica, who's here, is one, she's yeah. one of the coaches for us right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't coach anymore, but I'm, I'm ramping up my coaching company again. You are. And I love it. Yeah? Yeah. I'm now finally out of sales. I got a sales guy to replace yeah? me. Yeah? I went back into sales. Did I ever tell you? No. Dude, I worked hard from October. Like you being the sales guy for coaching calls? Yeah. From like October to like the end of like for four months straight. You were doing it all. Doing it all. I Why? I did 150, 160 because I, I redid the whole coaching company, the whole offer. But why did you feel like the need to be in the sales thing? Um, because the guy, well, the guy had was a lot of reasons. I, I'm, I'm coached by same guy that coaches like Grant Cardone sales team. Okay. Like the coach I have now is probably the, it's Cole Gordon. Okay. So it's his, uh, one of his guys who was a closer for him. That's now a coach for him. And he said, you just, we had to recraft the whole offer. I rewrote all the marketing, filmed the VSL, you know, re restructured everything. And I had to figure out if I could sell it. Okay, so you had to like... And I had to hear people say, I had to hear what the marketing hitting and the sales call and... So and what the objections are going to be and like all yeah, that. Yeah, all of it. I mean, it's not completely dialed in, but I'm out of it now. That's awesome. So, because I got to do something for the next five years. But what are you going to do after five years? Well, that's when Kendall will be in college. And then what? You'll just disappear? Nah, I'll probably be doing another five years. Right? But I'm only committing five years at a time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be... I'll be doing stuff actively in business until I'm 60 probably. Yeah? But when I'm 55, I really want to be like, not way less checked in. And more checked in. What, what are you going to divert your energy to? I think uh, Open Eyes. You know the uh, organization I went to Nepal and uh, you spend more Africa with them this yeah, year? Yeah, with your son, right? Yeah. It's awesome. It should be awesome. So I could easily, I mean, he attracts some real talent. The guy that runs that, that I'm really close with. Well, and you can also, I'm imagining, did you ever read the book Halftime? Oh yeah, I read all that. Bob Berg? Yeah, so like... He referred it to me. Yeah, so like you could channel all of everything you've learned into like an organization yeah. like that. I read, I, I listened to Halftime when I was turning 44. I was on a long run down to Hilton Head on my 44th birthday. I'm like, this is Halftime. And then I re-listened to it like six months ago. And I realized that I I really didn't. I mean, I guess to a certain extent, I, I, I restructured. Whatever you bring. Um, but I haven't really done as much as like, I'm definitely like square in the third quarter now. You know, so now it's-, it's Rounding really third? Time. Yeah, I mean, the third quarter is like, a, essentially it takes you through like, you know, early 60s or whatever. But I definitely want to do something that's, I like stuff like this. I mean, I like business. I like helping agents. But I think there's like a lot of, a lot of struggle in the world at large oh yeah that's just uh i was telling jess like because with her agents there's you know stuff comes up and i'm like dude i, I need you to understand something she's like what well, i'm like you're dealing with a broken pool 65 percent of people live paycheck to paycheck that's seven out of ten bro you're standing at starbucks seven of them can't afford that cup of coffee i heard right. something the other day that the average realtor in north america has four thousand dollars in savings that wouldn't surprise me at all that would surprise me it's that much. Yeah, but I don't know about you, but like I get people on calls like, like crying, like telling me all their stuff. It's like yeah. all the background stuff that's going on in their life. Yeah, it's a jacked up industry. That is motivation. I talked to, uh, they were 30 years in real estate, a husband and wife. 
and they didn't have, uh, I'm like, it's an $8,000 90-day program that I'm selling now. They didn't have the 8,000 bucks? They didn't have 2,000 bucks. Wow. I had to, I had to make them take out a credit card. You did? Yeah. I'm like, I don't have anything. I, I have nothing. And then they had a small team, so they needed like, they needed but stuff that doesn't could, change, nothing's gonna change. No. And they're, they're doing really well. That, 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 that for them, you want to be like, oh, should I ask him to do this? But it's like, that's what they need. That's putting their back up against the wall. Like, that could be the change for them. And, yeah, and you're, when you do something like that, for me, like I'm I'm not a hardcore closer. I know, I find that so interesting that but you I'm would do that. It's just like, you got to do it. I've gotten people, I mean, I get into their finances. You got, you got that, uh, that guy, I forgot his name, that we were both talking to. He signed up. He didn't have the money either. Yeah, he had to go 2002. Yeah. yeah. He didn't have uh, he didn't have thousand bucks. Here. Here, here, no. That's unbelievable though. But that's like everybody. I know, dude. I mean, like maybe you know, three quarters of people don't have like right. at least a toupee. They don't have four grand. No. When I joined Craig Proctor, I, I couldn't afford anything. I, I made them right on the, like the, what was like white, green, yellow, pink, the four different, I made them right on it. Will not charge credit card for 90 days. Oh, really? Yeah, and I got everything. I, was, I had nothing. Like my mom had to buy them for five hundred dollars to get to the event. <laughs> you told that story at his. You event. did. Yeah. Did you guys see the content from that? It was so good. Yeah, your, your, your content editor is great. That was so short, good. That little short of me talking about uh, yeah. you calling me. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. So good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. So good. I was like, my palms were sweating. <laughs> like, we were united. <laughs> what are you doing? Six days later. Yeah, it was I so fast. And on the Tuesday after the Saturday, I had to call, I had to tell Thomas I was leaving. I was just telling somebody about that story this past week, and they were like, what? Like, that fast? And I'm like, yup. Yeah, because fear trumps facts. That's, it's interesting because you would think because we do these events all the time and I'm always like either I'm doing the event or I'm the closer I'm the EXP guy at the end doing the talk and you would think when I show people the numbers and I explain it the way I do they all leap out of their fucking chairs and they're like let's go that's not what happens you know what I've noticed I think a couple things happen one is I think the numbers they don't compute they don't seem real they like I'll show them those numbers and they'll be like, yeah, but isn't there like a $25 broker review fee? I'm like, bro, did you just, did you just see what I just showed you, bro? Like, why the fuck are you even thinking about that? Right? So, so that's number one. Tell me more about the startup fee. Yeah. But the, the second thing I noticed is, is that people don't see themselves in me. And they'll tell themselves a story. They'll be like, oh, well, John is like, oh, well, Lars is like, and it's like, yeah, but then don't let's say. That. Let, that, that's why you got to get to these events. And well, I had a conversation with the with that Freedom Builders Mastermind I run, which are high-level dudes, like 750 or more GCI. And I was like, hey, what if somebody came to your market and said there's no deals in, in the Carolinas? None. No listings. What would you tell them? Like, yeah, it's not fucking true. I'm like, okay, what would you tell them they need to do? They need to learn the skills how to do it. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, don't you guys say that shit to me all the time? He's like, oh, bro, the media and this. I'm like, you just got to learn how to do it, dude. It's not... I'm going to do it. I, I came into this too, being on the road for a year and a half. I was on plus, dude. I haven't talked to anybody. So all the relationships that I had, only the really, really good ones were there still because I didn't talk to anybody in like almost two years. Really? And now I'm calling people up. Hey, what's going on? You know, so it was like a long, a long delay in that in that process to be able to talk to them. Yeah. So they're like, why is John calling me? I haven't heard from him in years. Wow. Like Jason Chimbaugh hadn't spoken to the guy in at least two years. Halfway through the watching the 30 minute Branco model. He's program. like, I'm ready. He goes, John, can I interrupt you? Hold on a second. And I'm like, yeah, what's going on, Jason? He goes, are you doing EXP? And I said, yeah. He said, okay, I'm in. He didn't even let the video play. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Uh, yeah, that's funny you had that. I want to do like videos on, because I don't think people, I, I don't, not that I think, I know they don't read ICAs at all. And I wanted, they, they don't read them at all. I'll be like, yo, what's your ICA say? They're like, what? I'm like, you know that thing you signed? They're like, what are you talking about? They don't even look at them. But I want to do like this thing that's baffling to me, and I don't know if people would, you know, if it would cause like a ruckus, but like how compasses or Caldwells, their model is legitimately taking advantage of contractual law. Like that's what it is. 
It's basically trapping agents because we we all agree. Are we talking about Compass. Right? Yeah, or, the worst. or Compass or Caldwell. They do the same thing. Yeah, where like essentially like the agents don't even know that when they take the marketing fee that they're re-upping the entire contract again for three years. Yeah, it's awful. dude, it's awful. I, and, I have a guest that's supposed to be here, and he had another conversation with his attorney and got so disheartened. He's just kind of like, gone I got dark. two guys who just came recently. One paid seventy-seven thousand bucks to get out. Yeah. Another one fifty-five thousand. And he's complaining about the the seventy or hundred thousand he's going to pay. I'm like, dude, you're paying it anyway. Yeah. If you wait another year to come to EXP, you paid more than that and split. Yeah, my two guys paid it, but they don't have it. He didn't have it. Yeah. Yeah. And my I'm two, like, well, what are they going to do? But I think that's horrible. Oh, it's I mean, shitty. It's like you're trying to trap me. Like, eff it, I'm going anyway. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Ben did. The, the franchise that I, my wife had, they tried to hold me in, and I, I was, he was with me. Well, on the personality through. profile, you probably have a high need for independence. Yeah. I do too. I also have a high need for dominance. I have a high disregard for authority. Yeah. You know what I notice about myself, bro? Like, we'll be, I'll be somewhere. And like, let's say you're out and about and somebody says something to you, you're like, hey man, like you shouldn't do that over here. I'll be like, what? Like, it's like for no reason. I'll be like, yeah. what do you, like, why? Why? Who says? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I always want to challenge it. But like, I think, remember how I was saying to you, like, they're like, oh, what should we do? What people should be doing is media that talks about this shit because nobody talks about yeah. it. Like, bro, like they contractually take advantage of agents' lack of financial strength Lack and lack of knowledge. business yeah. acumen and lack of like exactly. contractual law. Yeah. That's what they do. And it's like, it's their business. Yeah. I think Caldwell Banker went through a lot of buying agents for a Oh while. yeah, they offered Jose 250 grand. It's like, you're just gonna, you're literally gonna pay that money back to them. And then- and Jose then, was smart enough to see through it. Yeah. He's like, it's a payday advance. I'm just gonna give you all the money back. Yeah. But it works because they just don't have any money. Yeah. Somebody said to me, they were like, so they thousand to walk away from my franchise. Plus, I lost hundreds of thousands in the build out. Yeah. But I was like, that's the best money we ever spent. Screw yeah. You. We, I lost forty-two thousand on the shares back to KW, and I capped twice. Oh wow. So it was like probably eighty around the horn. But I knew, same. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, fuck it, it's fine. I made it all back in one year in Redshirt. One hundred twenty-five. Hell yeah. yeah I'm He's the you. shit. We just got $185,000 tax bill last week. I'm like, this is stupid. Like, I told you, you saw what he did for me, right? Yeah. I'm I, still with ProVision. Those guys are awful now. They're so unresponsive. No, and ProVision's more like, I view them as like, uh, we use them. I'm going to use, he's going to recommend me a yeah. service. Though. They're just like bookkeepers, bro. Yeah. But like he, I have a meeting with him in March where he brings like five different investment vehicles to the table. That's cool. That's like, yo, he if you, that real estate part. yeah, if you do this, 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 and this, different vehicles. So last year we did oil and gas. I'd never done that before. Yeah. That's 90% depreciation year one. Wow. So you invest 100 grand, it's $90,000 top line off your taxes. And it's an easy investment to get in or out of. You give right? the money and what happens is you get distributions quarterly, but it's not like the way he explained it to me. He's like, dude, this isn't like the fucking wild west. Can you sell it? No, but he's like, this isn't like the Wild West where like, they're like, is there oil here? It's like, they already drilled it, it's there. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're already pulling it out What's of the ground. What's your recapture rate on that investment? 11 to 12% per year. Oh, that's cool. So like probably so over- it's a solid investment and yeah. it's all the tax- And it's tax benefit. And then I also bought a short-term rental last year and that was 80% depreciation year one. What? Short-term rental. Oh yeah. And what I did is I, I, I paid cash for it, but I have a, uh, like an operational partner so me and Carla don't do anything. I just see when there's bookings, he sends me the statement at the end of every month and wires the money into the account. Cool. So it's just figuring out. And then I did a, I did the insurance thing that you did. The life insurance? And well, what I did is I sold, cause I had like two accounts. I had like a, uh, with index funds in it, a taxable account, but I had a retirement account too, like a- You a, rolled your retirement account into that? I liquidated, no, what, the way it works is it's you- It's like you put a wrapper, it's a- Yeah, you, you put it inside of the, uh, retirement account i liquidated index funds in the retirement account to fund it you do that for three years and then after three years you pull it out now it's it's out of jail there is a tax consequence but there has to be a death benefit to have insurance so say you have an eight million dollar death benefit you're like hey i need 150 grand to pay my tax thing and they give it to you and there's no taxes on that money because it's a loan yeah we'll probably do that too and then what he said is like after four years you can 
or if you don't, he didn't turn his on, but after four years, you can turn it on where you can go to them based on, they take all your blood and shit, your, your health rating. They'll give you, let's say like 50 grand a year for the rest of your life. As from your death benefit. And it's tax free in all 50 states. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, it's dope. I'll probably do that. I've got three big policies on me. Yeah, and I'll probably... Turn it on? Yeah, but probably when I turn like 60. Yeah. Because then it's like, I, I don't know what the, even the cash value is going to be something crazy like nine or 10 million. Yeah, and you'll probably make like $8,000 a month or something, $10,000 yeah. a month. It'll be, just got to get the kids out of the house and launch so I don't have to pay so much money. For their activities. For their activities. Even Anders Volleyball is like, you know, not cheap. All the travel and stuff, yeah. yeah. We only need 12% to make this company go. You guys know we revenue shared 202 million last year. Does everybody know that number? 202 million. It's not really far out to think that we're going to revenue share over the next four years. One billion dollars. Woo! Woo! Woo!